Let's make sure we're coming in live. There we are. Awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to my channel and welcome to my live stream. And what is the date today? Today is October 21st, 2020. And we're continuing to read Salvadoran, The Psychedelic Essence of Salvia Divinorum by DM Turner. Okay. We read about half of this in the previous live stream and we're going to continue reading this thing and hopefully read the whole book there isn't that much to it i think we're on page like 27 or so and the book is about 57 pages we're going to have 30 pages or so to go and um, this is an unscheduled live stream so what i'm going to do is uh, just give you guys my little intro while we wait for people to pop in anyone that caught the announcement uh, the notice is going out uh, if you want to know what this is about and who I am and what we're up to, I am on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to support this work, Patreon is a fantastic way to do so. I don't put anything beyond paywalls. Everything's Creative Commons. Share and share a like. You can follow the work. And after a while, after you see what we're sharing, if you think you have the means to support this work through Patreon, it's a great way to support this project. We are live streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash chicho live, C H Y C H O L I V E. If you want to participate in the chat in these live streams as they are happening, Twitch is where you want to be at. Elder God, how are you doing? <laughs> I was wondering who's going to pop in first. <laughs> Are you creating chaos in the UK? Also, also, also. And for those of you who are supporting this work through Twitch uh, by following, by subscribing, by participating in these live streams and stuff, thank you very much for being here. For those of you who are supporting this work through Patreon, thank you very much for your support. Spider Man, how are you doing? How is life, Max Decker? Hey, hey, hey. Hope everyone's having a good evening. Good uh, afternoon for me. I hope you're having a good evening, Max gina how are you doing i had to get this live stream in part two of reading this book we had to finish it before i started the next set which we start tomorrow we've got 11 scheduled live streams so uh this is the unscheduled live stream i was hoping i was a i was going to be able to get this in before we started that set right i sort of want to keep things tight as we're doing them twitching jason how you doing yes caught another one afternoon afternoon i saw this going you saw the coming eh? <laughs> i was trying i was hoping man i had meetings this morning and i just finished off a meeting uh online with a with a school and uh the educators and stuff like this um so i'm glad i can get it in and then i got students afterwards Duda, hey Chicho, my first live streams. Good to be here. Good to have you here, Duda. Welcome to a live stream. This is going to be a little bit different because um, I'm not going to be interacting with chat uh, very much. Once I start reading, I'm just going to read the book, and people are welcome to talk, you know, chat away. I'll keep chat going here, um, so you'll see it. And I'm going to be recording on a lapel mic. Uh, that way, I can take the second part and splice it with the first part and release the whole audiobook the reading in one shot as well on soundcloud and i'll try to put the video together edit it as long as my editing software doesn't or computer doesn't have hiccups um and we'll um, we'll load it up zarek thank you very much for let's see what kind of emote we got for the twitch prime sub what did we get we got a little purple heart with a hand what is this kpo kpo plov kpo p love kpo p love thank you very much for the twitch prime sub dub weaver hey chicho hope you're doing well doing well man thank you very much skellog skellogs cornflakes hope all is good pal doing well doing well lonely piggy how are you doing have you been looking forward to this street man I, I was trying to get it in a couple of days ago i couldn't yesterday i couldn't today was the last day before we start the set so yeah i was looking forward to getting it in is this a salvia book this is a salvia book no idea what this is hello everyone <laughs> we got part one out on bit shoot and youtube so you can read uh, the part one. Oh, the the emote. I don't know what that is either. Looks like a 
Oh, I think maybe it's like this. Hand like this with a heart on it. Cool, more emos to play with. I do announce these scheduled and unscheduled live streams 30 minutes before we go live on LO Minds, VK Parlor, Gap, and Twitter. And all the links will be in the description of the video. Remember the diligence. Yeah, do you <laughs> the disclaimer? This is not a recommendation. This is just sharing information. What we're about to read, okay? So, and we will talk about this a lot more. We have an enthusiast stream coming up in this set as well. So, this is just sharing information, gang. We will be uploading the audio. Of this reading to SoundCloud, SoundCloud.com forward slash Chicho C H Y C H O. Okay, I'll put it all together, release it in one shot. Okay, I hope, fingers crossed. And um, it should be available on your favorite podcasting platform, including Spotify and iTunes. And we will be uploading this video to both BitChute and YouTube. And you can support this work through BitChute and YouTube by following, by subscribing by sharing by commenting by liking and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining youtube membership okay convert from gaming prime to tier one sub roy's our boy 1996 thank you very much for uh, prime gaming sub and following okay let me take these guys down gang and we're going to get into the reading <coughs> hopefully my voice will hold out nikki how are you doing hey what's up I'm gonna do a reading brother and this is the book we're reading gang i'm gonna put this up now okay hold on let me take this out this is a quintessential book uh, regarding salvia divinorum it is the quintessential book regarding salvia divinorum okay this is it this was written in 1996, I believe. We read the, yeah, 1996. He put out a previous book. I didn't bring it here. Um, and we will most likely read his other book as well, DM Turner's other book. There's two books that DM Turner has published. And most likely we're gonna read both of them, okay? And it's the only two books that I actively collect. I showed you guys on the last video. Uh, and this book is the quintessential book regarding Salvia de Manorum. Essential reading. Okay. Cool lamp. Thank you. <laughs> Sweet reading, brother. Gonna relax and absorb. Awesome, Nikki. I hope you enjoy. Gang, I'm gonna turn on my recorder here. And feel free to discuss whatever you guys want to discuss and participate in chat i'm not going to keep an eye on chat because i'll get distracted from the reading so i want to make sure that uh, i'm staying focused and uh, trying to pronounce whatever names that come up and whatnot and in the previous reading we read all the way up to page we read all the way up to page 25 right we read all the way up to page 25 but i'm going to read i'm going to start from page 23 because that really kicks off the salvadoran a journeys right which is basically trip reports and that occurs from page 23 okay and the table of contents for this is pretty short it's a small book right uh that contains a tremendous amount of information tremendous amount of information so what we did previously we read all of these right and we're here right now page 23 and we're going to try to finish it fingers crossed fingers crossed okay <coughs> relax gang i hope you enjoy the read i hope uh, you find this information to your liking i'll try to not fidget too much got a liqueur here and ready to go awesome do da I'm going to do some liqueur sampling on Saturday, I believe. Lots of liqueur sampling on Saturday. Test, test, test. Well, let's just sync it up just in case we're going to sync it up. Okay. That should be good enough. I doubt it. I think we're just going to put it on audio on the video. It's full blown video right now, right? Gang, let's begin. Continuing reading Salvanorin, the psychedelic essence of Salvia Divinorum 
by D.M. Turner. Starting on page 23. Salvanoran A. Journeys. My journeys with Salvanoran A, hereafter referred a called Salvanoran, are more varied than those of any other psychedelic I've used and include both my best and worst psychedelic journeys. My understanding and content of these journeys has evolved with repeated use. Certain ideas and perceptions have become clearer as I've become familiar with the territory, although the entire experience still remains largely, largely incomprehensible, and there exists a feeling of having just stepped over the threshold into an immensely vast dimension. A description of the general framework of most of my Salvanoran journeys is given below, followed by excerpts of notes from my journeys. Also presented are reports from other ex um, experimenters' journeys, which will assist in offering a more comprehensive view of the realms available through Salvadoran, Salvia Divinorum. My experiences with Salvanoran can be divided into three phases or periods, the onset, trance, and return. These periods closely match the unfolding of a smoked DMT experience. Initial effects are felt within 20 to 30 sec uh, 10 to 20 seconds, with the peak being reached in about 30 seconds or so. I usually stay at this peak in trance for three to 10 minutes. There, three to 10 minutes, after which there's a 10 to 20 minute decline to baseline. When used with another psychedelic, the duration of a Salvanoran experience can be increased several fold. Salvanoran comes on with an irresistibly powerful spiraling force, which is much stronger than that felt on any other psychedelic. During the onset, I quickly fall into a trance while my body feels permeate, per, permeated by needle-like anesthetic sensations. Both of these sensations are quite similar to what I feel during the onset of smoked NNDMT. Within seconds of this first phase, the Salvadoran separates my awareness from my body, similarly to what occurs with 5-MeO-DMT or ketamine. Salvanoran is quite distinct from ketamine, however, in that like DMT, Salvanoran ex exudes a strongly life positive energy where ketamine does not necessarily have this predilection. Following this, I go on an internal journey while my body is lying down in trance. My experience in rec my experience or recollection of the second phase varies greatly. Sometimes I perceive the most cosmic, wondrous, and detailed of universes, while at other times I recall absolutely nothing. In these moments of recalling nothing, I've often felt as though I only smoked the Salvanoran a few moments ago and have retained consciousness the entire time. I then look at a clock and realize five or ten minutes has have passed and I cannot account for. I've developed a theory for this vast difference in experiences, which I'll discuss later. The amount of time I spent in the trance and how high I am upon returning to bod bodily awareness varies with each journey. It seems that I am normally pulled out of the trance by some type of sound. At home, this may be a car passing by, while out in nature, it seems that a bird will chirp or a bug will fly around my head. In most instances, the sound which pulls me out of the trance seems like a distraction which is interfering with the experience. It is not surprising that Mazatex recommended that it be done in quiet. There is a tendency for awareness to lock in onto individual perceptions during the return phase and for these perceptions to appear to fill the entire universe. This has been particularly noted 
by Siebert and myself when music was being played during the trip. The portion of the journey immediately following the trance is often the most intense and leaves the strongest impression. While coming out of the trance, the bodily and aesthetic sensations often persist and are stronger when I come out of the trance prematurely. These feelings can be compared to the needles of pin needles and pins sensation of trying to move an arm or leg which has fallen asleep. Following one journey, I wrote, quote, I must have willed myself to move and felt the anesthesia sensations gripping me firmly with an almost cutting sensation. It was not exactly painful. It felt as though I was tightly gripped by millions of sharp fingernails applying minimal pressure. But if I moved, I would be cut to shreds." End quote. This can also be experienced as a tearing sensation over the entire surface of the body. Siebert has described in intensified feelings of this type as, quote, various sensations of motion or being pulled or twisted by forces of some kind, end quote. On occasion, these sensations have been very pleasant, close to pendrails, quote, like soft cat paws pressing, or like a bunch of bird tongues lapping the mind, or like tiny fingers that weigh ivy fingers each out to climb a wall, end quote. The most constant internal experience in my Salvadoran journeys is a drastic shift in my sense of identity and consciousness, conscious perception. At the onset of the experience, my identity is completely dis dislodged from my body and familiar self, familiar self. Following this experience, my myself as existing, but not as a body human or personality i usually find myself in some alternate dimension which can either closely resemble earth or be entirely alien quite often the words worlds visited under the influence of salvanoran do not obey the laws of physics which we are typically accustomed to the action of the forces of gravity and momentum the dimensions of time the geometric construction of these worlds can be rather bizarre. There is also an apparent reduction in boundaries and the sensation that my being can literally enter and inhabit various objects, including inanimate ones. There have been numerous reports from people who have had quite vivid and convincing experiences of becoming objects such as a dresser drawer. As I begin tra tra traversing these unusual dimensions, I feel driven by forces which I don't fully understand, but which I believe to be influenced by my set and setting. At the point I come out of the trance, external reality begins making an imprint on my experience and accelerates the return to normal awareness. Some of my more interesting journeys are described below. One, DM Turner, 1.3 milligram Salvinorin. My f for my first journey, I smoked appro approximately 1.3 milligrams of Salvinorin. Immediately after smoking, I felt the effects coming on and seemed to lose consciousness after a few seconds. My next recollections are of moving about in what could have been a suburban American town in the 1950s or 60s. However, I was not a person, nor did I remember ever having been a person or taking any drug. At some point in my travels, it seemed that I had stopped moving. I was perceiving everything as though I was an exterior wall of a house. I could see a yard, a street, and a village with some trees around. I could have been from my it could have been from my childhood, but does not bring to mind any specific memories. I soon realized that I was glued to this particular existence 
as the side of a house. I had become something inanimate and material, yet I was aware of life around me and knew that I had recently been a particular human being prior to taking some powerful psychedelic. I tried to return to my previous human identity and found I was, I was unable to do so. I felt that I was stuck for in, in eternity as the side of this house and an acute sense of fear and terror began to develop. In my struggle, I tried to move and distinctly felt the force which was anesthetizing my body, inducing the trance and holding me as though I was possessed. These sensations felt extremely similar to how NNDMT feels in these respects, only stronger. I realized my body was lying on my bed, frozen, with my jaw hanging open in a state of astonishment. I knew that whatever I'd taken was not DMT, but as I intensified these uh, efforts as DMT-like, identified these efforts, effects, I knew that whatever i taken was not DMT, but as I identified these effects as DMT-like, I felt that I'd taken a step towards escaping from the spell which I found myself under. As I continued to struggle back to consciousness, conscious reality, there was moments when it seemed the spell would never end, and there was even temptation to just rest in it. I did not feel particularly uncomfortable, only whatever, only somewhat, when I attempted to return to my human identity and found, my, found myself unable to do so. I felt perturbed at whoever had given me this bizarre psychedelic. Why would someone give me a substance which would leave me eter eternally existing as the side of a house? This reminded me of some of the weird tales I'd heard of others who had tried this substance. I could relate to these experiences, and remembering that they had somehow returned from this realm gave me con confidence in my own returning. It then seemed very important that I remember the name of the person who had given me the substance, that this would somehow lead me back to sanity. After passing through various names I associated with psychedelics, I came up with the correct name, and upon remembering this, was able to pull myself out of bed. I immediately began walking towards the door of my room. Before, I, before the journey, I had pa placed a note on the door as a reminder not to wander outside, and upon seeing this note, sat down to await the conclusion of the journey. Looking at the clock, I saw that I'd, I'd spent 11 minutes in the trance. This experience was quite different from any of my latter Salvadoran journeys. It is the only time I recall becoming a two-dimensional object, although familiar experiences have been reported by a large percentage of users. The sensation of getting stuck or glued to a spot while traveling through hyperspace is also common and has occurred on some of my other journeys. During this journey, I also had the idea that Salvanoran can only be passed on from one person to the next. I have had this idea repeatedly in my Salvanoran journeys, but still do not comprehend its meaning. 2. DM Turner 400 to 800 micrograms salvinorin. My next three journeys were done with smaller amounts ranging from 400 to 800 micrograms. There were three related themes which repeated and developed throughout these journeys. The first is a seeming, is a seeming inter, inter change that would take place between myself and whatever I was perceiving. It was as though the perceiver and the perceived switch places. I would become that which I was normally aware of. The second theme is an apparent identity shift that would occur almost immediately upon smoking the Salvinoran. 
it seemed that I was knocked out of my identity with the body by an instantaneous percussive per per force. Perceptions of this event include the sensation of switching places between my own awareness identity and the awareness identity belonging to the speck of Salvador which I had smoked. The third theme relates to Salvador being the substance of pure consciousness, an idea that may have sprung from my amazement at the experience produced by a tiny speck of white crystalline powder, no lar la larger than a couple of grains of salt. If there is a physical counterpart to consciousness, memory or identity in humans, and if it could be extracted from our brains, I think we would find our something similar to Salvador. In one of my journeys, I began repeating the words, quote, becomes the substance that memory is made of, end quote. The internal sensation was that after Salvador is smoked and reached the brain, it becomes the physical matter of sub or substance that constitutes memory and there is a vast increase in the amount of information which is available to me. I also realized that memory is linked nearly synonymously with identity and also very closely with consciousness. As Salvinorin is coming on, I gain consciousness and memory. I never actually lose consciousness, although this was my interpretation of earlier experiences. It's simply that consciousness becomes so vast and I lose the perspective of my individual self. As the effects of the Salvinorin wear off, some pro protective aspects of, of the mind sensors much of my memory of the experience, as it similarly does to memories of ketamine and DMT journeys. Three, anonymous, approximately 1.7 milligrams salvinorin. The following report of a highly alarming experience is excer excerpted from an early experiment utilizing approximately 1.7 milligrams of salvinorin. The subject was highly experienced in the, in the use of other psychedelics and gave the following preface to this report. Quote, I have smoked DMT several times. It was the ultimate disembodied, colorful and blissful realm I had known. I have taken full doses of ayahuasca where the DMT is allowed to become orally active after mixing with another plant with its own array of psychoactive properties. I was healed by ayahuasca and saw her face. I have used a large dose of ibogaine and was propelled through multiple universes, breaking through barrier after barrier, out of body for four hours, and had seen the spirit of ibogaine. I also had climbed over the shoulders of a Kan Yin several hundred feet tall. I have been injected with ketamine and was flung into a pinball universe of feelings having color having colors and thought I had been taken to a hospital and had been cared for a long time too fed helpless and realized that I was fine. I was looking forward to a disembodied journey into here heretofore undescribed blissful realms perhaps occupied by entities with whom I might relate or simply marvel at, after the while preceded and accompanied by beautiful abstract psychedelic patterns. I was anxious, but not frightened. I knew my drugs and was a relative heart head, needing more than most to break through. It was a minute amount, it was a minute amount of material and flew into the pipe immediately upon vaporizing. There was no taste, nor any throat irritation. I remember thinking, 
quote, this is just a little bit of material, but I got it all, end quote. I had plenty of time to lay back and during, during, during so laid my glasses to my left. I exhaled and the vapor looked like my breath condensing in cold, dry, cold, dry air outside. I closed my eyes as I felt the onset of the of effects. I began to say, as I have so many times before, quote, welcome, I'm back. It's nice to be here again, end quote. My face began to began spreading into a wide grin. It felt like my face could not contain the grin. It must have lost consciousness. I must have lost consciousness briefly, or there was no transition. The next thing I experienced was the feeling of my stretching grin extending outside of my face or beyond or beyond the borders of what I have experienced, what I have learned to experience as my face. Was there a ripping sound? Was there a painful feeling of pins and needles, a feeling of the skin being stretched beyond what it what is normal? I was lying on my back on the bed and the right half of my body was being stretched out and some, somehow below me. I felt half of my body was being pulled up and out. I vaulted, I vaulted arch on my ceiling open, a vaulted arch of our ceiling opened up and a Caucasian man with a hat like a uh, bowler leaned down to his right down to the brown leg of his slacks he looked at me from what seemed nearly a hundred feet and said it's time to go now and began moving his right leg forward in a step as his right leg swung forward my body was merging into his pant leg below his knee this part of his body being as tall as i am the rather most of my body was being pulled into his leg my neck arms and head were being dragged forward as the bed was being stretched the visual experience was as if the world including my body and all that i saw had become flat two-dimensional and was a sheet or a thin rubber skin a layer as the pulling forward as the pulling forward and out was taking place the colored forms of what i saw were smeared as if a running palette of colors pulled stretched thinned i pulled back wondering if i could pull away from this tearing of the world it's time to go now my body the world as i knew it was being pulled into the bl black universe stars studying the space while the outline of this man was covered with the being pulled smeared reality of which i was an integral part i was stunned frightened disbelieving i think it hurt but even more painful was the idea that this was it my mind began trying to to sort out what had happened i saw my wife who had not smoked any salvinorn i was in our room on the bed I was looking at my arms, my legs, and they were being pulled like rubber cement into the surface of the world as if, as if it was disappearing. Moving forward into the brown material of this plant leg, is this all the world is? Part of some big man's pant leg? It's just too bizarre. But it was happening. It's time to go now almost with some impatience as if i were so muddled as to not know that this was the end the end of this reality gone going being rent stretched pulled into another very small and insignificant part of something so big it was incomprehensible it did not seem right i tried saying i can't believe this is happening to me this is too weird. Is this how it ends? A pant leg being ripped out and forward? I have not. I had no warning. This is not what I expected. I was completely convinced that this was taking place. 
but the right half of my mouth was not there to properly form the words when my wife later said that it was speaking gibberish but there was a sense of wondered revelation to my tone she said i look relatively normal when i open my eyes no enlarged dilated pupils but she knew when she heard me that i was far gone i looked at my wife she too was being pulled up and out the right half of her body seeming seeming into the movement forward i thought it was happening to her but she was more concerned about how i was reacting than to for her own demise i thought of the person who had given me the substance that this was something he knew and that my taking the substance was the trigger for the end of the universe space time all history all people and things and feelings of thoughts all flattened and streaming forward into a smeared palette of colors my wife told me i was uh, staring in disbelief around me at my body and saying it's <laughs> it's smeared it's smearing it's the universe we are moving into the universe it's ending i looked carefully at my left forearm and hand i saw the transition between my flesh and tiny bubbles of colors seeming upward and outward into the pulling canvas of matter my legs were doing the same thing as was the entire room it's time to go now the sense continued hammering i felt but did not think no it i'm not ready this is so much undone unfelt unsaid i felt i should have been better warned or prepared i thought of the buddha my patron saint and the teachings he uh, pro promulgated 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 there was nothing in them that was even close to the enormity of what i was experiencing did he know about this was he was he and all his teaching the life of thousands of years of followers of his and other religions ending as a thin two-dimensional sheet it seemed so trivial compared to how it was ending i want wondered about the plant from which this material was derived is this the reason for the plant's existence to meditate the ending of the universe to one of my requests for reassurance my wife said it's happening relax lay back in bed i'd been twisting and turning trying to move away from the dissolving edge i said to my wife if this is how it ends i ought to just relax i will miss you i'm glad we met please lay by my side so we can go out together she laid down next to me and i kissed her forehead she then lay across my chest enveloping me with my with her body i felt her love and felt we were ending together i i felt us both merging into the edges edges of the end and felt my body merging more fully with the sheet of reality that we were becoming some moments later i opened my eyes again and felt the ripping and pulling diminishing i looked up and saw that the ceiling was beginning to conge con congeal around a well democrat democratic line i looked at my left hand and saw there was an irregular line curving in the same pattern as that of the ceiling my hand was slowly filling in with substance again i used all my strength to roll out onto my left side always from the force away from the force that had been sucking and stretching everything forward i sat up next to it and could see the outline of the force in the air i said to my wife it's less it's over i need to get out of here i was afraid it would start up again and felt if i was not in the room i could escape it i said i'm down i'm not tripping anymore i'm fine 
I just need to get out of here fast. I went to the door leading outside. My truck was outside, a vehicle I had had for 12 years. I wanted to look at it to verify its solidity and see how it was faring. My wife later said I was crouching and moving extremely rapidly and appeared psychotic. The deadbolt was locked and for a second I thought it's because there's no way to escape the ending. I then, I then remember, remembered my wife had l locked the deadbolt and went to the dresser where the keys are usually kept but was unable to find them. On my way to the other door, my wife managed to get me back in the bed. The experience continued to subdue. The colors were no longer coming off my body. I sat on the bed, staring at my extremities, shaken, disturbed, completely baffled, upset, alarmed, exhausted, sad, frightened, stunned. The room now looked fine. I was no longer tripping but still altered. I kept saying to my wife, I'm fine now, but I just had an unbelievable experience. I do not know what to say. This report, end quote, this report provides an excellent description of how frightening, frighteningly, shockingly, and unpredictable a Salvadoran journey can be. It also shows rather it also shows another variation of the bizarre physical realities encountered on this substance and hints at some of the possible dangers that can arise through its use. The next report describes a quite different journey with highly positive results. 4. DM Turner, 350 micrograms Salvadoran with 360 micrograms LSD. My fifth journey, which took place five days after my first, was also the first time I combined Salvadoran with LSD. I started with 360 micrograms of quad sep, very pure LSD. About four hours after I smoked 350 micrograms of Salvadoran, which was greatly um, potentiated. Prior to smoking the Salvadoran, I noticed that the entire LSD trip felt different than the many other trips I had, I had using the same batch. It seemed that everything had a Salvadoran edge to it, which was probably a result of my experiences in the preceding days. I also noticed an unusually heavy adrenaline flow, which increased as I was approaching the time I smoked the Salvinoran. Conversely, my mind seemed quite calm as I looked forward to trying this combination primarily with curiosity, secondly with enthusiasm, and felt only a slight amount of apprehension. I took a shower and meditated for a while to calm down prior to smoking Salvinoran. The initial effects felt the initial effects felt similar to my other Salvadoran experiences in that I found myself relaxing in a state of immensely expanded awareness. On this occasion, however, my awareness was filled with millions of universes, bordering on the brink of infinity as I frequently experienced with ketamine. While enjoying this immersion in consciousness, I realized I was not existing in the time-bound physical universe, which I normally call reality. My being was separate, separating from physical space-time, as though they were two separate wheels rotating in opposite, opposite directions. It was as though I died and become embodied consciousness and was no longer subject to the gravitational laws of the earth spinning around its axes and revolving around the sun etc 
I also was no longer anchored to the gravity of the ego, and there was nothing to prevent my drifting off in whatever direction the cosmic forces propelled me. A minute later, I became aware of sensations in my body and felt myself being pulled out of this ex expanded universe into my previous existence. The sensations felt as though I had stepped outside of time for just a second, was enjoying a tranquil moment of eternity, and then felt myself being yanked back by a strange force that prevents things from moving between multiple universes. I had the thought that what I experienced was similar to someone who'd had a near-death experience. It seemed that I had died for a short period, that consciousness or identity began to disperse, and then I was suddenly yanked back from the gates of heaven by some attachment to my body. Is Salvanorn related to a substance produced in the brain of people who undergo near-death experiences it felt that when i smoked the salmonorn i had remembered who i was i remembered i was consciousness not a body and as consciousness i had access to unlimited realms another perception of what took place is that i the smoked the salmonorn dissolved into infinity and a different but similar entity jumped out of infinity into my body that was lying on the bed this seemed to be an explanation for my body's fears my body my body knew it was going to be losing the spirit which had been inhabiting it and was going to have a new spirit come inside after returning to bodily awareness i jolted down some notes i jotted down some notes and lay back to enjoy the remainder of the salvadoran journey soon i saw a rounded wave-like shape moving in front of me located horizontally across the room it was very soft in contrast to the rest of the environment it was clear and appeared to be made of made only of air but had a blurring refocusing lens-like effect on whatever was seen through it I closed my eyes I began to see bright white light which often accompanies an ego death experience during psychedelic journeys this light never reached the intensity of which I knew it was it was capable and remained shrouded in a veil of softly glowing green light soon this manifested into a beautiful sensuous flowing image it appeared to be a lux luxurant green vine serpent plant goddess incorporating all of these forms into a whole that was alive and constantly moving i distinctly recall seeing long group twisting vines and a moderate amount of leaves that resembled maple leaves in shape the twisting body of a serpent and the face and top half of a female body all of these images appeared several times in different branches of this entity and were intricately interwoven and flowing in and out of each other all the images were green in color with the exception of the female body bodies which were a lighter green tinted white i felt this entity to be the spirit of Sal salvia divinorum plant who was inviting me into her world i also had the impression that i could best communicate with her by ingesting her leaves rather than using the ultra potent extracted active principle and if i were to seek her in a natural plant filled environment this was my first encounter with what i'll call the salvia entity i have now encountered this entity on about 20 occasions several of them occurring when i had not consumed any four form of salvia divinorum certain visions and feelings have been common in these encounters the salvia entity is also is almost always accompanied 
by a luxurant green radiance frequently seen as a large twisting matrix of fleshy green vines which on occasion appear to spread throughout the entire universe the feeling and energy that accompanies these this entity is loving benevolent healing and comforting one person described it as being rocked in the arms of mother nature salvia divinorum has the most distinctly feminine energy of any entheogen i have used it also has a quality of pristine clarity and pureness which may have something to do with the mazatex associating it with the virgin experiences experiences of this nature have been reported by several users of salvia divinorum number five dm turner 650 micrograms salvinorin with 500 micrograms lsd several days later i repeated this experience using 500 micrograms of lsd and smoked 650 micrograms of salvador about one and a half hours into the trip i imme immediately after smoking the salvador familiar sensations began coming over me however these seemed gentler than usual within seconds the visuals turned into a con continuation of the green plant serpent goddess i had seen during my recent journey this first appeared as a large twisted green vine that was growing branching twirling and interwining itself in ev every which direction the energy of this plant seemed very pleasant i paid closer attention to it and saw that the vine strands were actually made of continuous lines of serpents that were biting each other's tails then upon further examination i saw the vine composed of fish biting each other's tails and as i noticed this it seemed that i was let into a secret and into a new dimension of experiences these fish were seen doing loops circles and cascading all about in electric psychedelic patterns many of the fish looked dolphin or porpoise porpoise like the feeling this vision invoked was both magical and funny thousands of these tiny fish were lightly biting on the entire surface of my body producing the needle-like anesthetic sensation i've come to experience with salvinorin the sensation here was much gentler than usual and rather pleasant since i found the experience both cosmically meaningful and funny i said out loud green electric fish and soon afterwards started laughing i had a tape tape recorder running during the sensation and later discovered i had spoken these words 20 seconds after smoking the salvinorin one thing i noticed was that green electric and fish are three things which a human will immediately reject as being not self or repulsive when i saw the plants turn to fish i realized there was a close synergy between them both plants and fish have lived on this planet many times longer than humans in living in balance with and very connected to the earth they have developed an elaborate consciousness network which i felt i had been let in on these green electric fish which represent what humans are not were inviting me into this their world into this consciousness and seemingly wanted to play soon i found myself in an underwater world it was as though i had shape shifted and was now perceiving through the eyes of some some creature that lived in the sea I saw a continual view looking through water upward towards the light the scenes that i was watching seemed extremely realistic and changed at about the rate that a fish swims 
at almost all times there was a curving lens-like effect that looked through water creatures uh, that water creates uh, lens-like effect that looking through water creates and I now think back on the lens-like wave I saw in my recent experience there were visions looking up through seaweed as it gently moved in the ocean swells while light filtered down intricate patterns created in the water by other fish swimming above me and the magical intricacies of light filtering through water the light always came from above with this journey I began noticing that the content of the Salvanoran experience is significantly altered if taken following the ingestion of another psychedelic this theory has been repeatedly confirmed by by subsequent Salvanoran journeys taken both with and without other substances normally when I smoke Salvanoran there is a tendency to almost immediately begin looking for a reference point to start coming back in my baseline state of mind I tend to have a firm definition of reality while Salvador temporarily breaks my grasp of reality some mechanism in my be me begins attempting to reestablish a stable vantage point shortly after I feel this is an Im impediment to having useful or enjoyable journeys on Salvador and lately I have con conducted most of my Salvadoran journeys while tripping. In the instances when I smoke Salvadoran while already high on LSD, I have been able to effortlessly float into the journey and into the Salvadoran realm for a long period of time. This has provided much more meaningful and helpful experiences. I think this difference is due to LSD's property of diminishing the tendency to continually define one's ego boundaries. In later experiences, I discovered that this combination is only useful if Salvadoran is used in the early stages of an LSD journey, while the ego is in a state of releasing its grasp. When I smoke Salvadoran during the return stage of LSD journeys, when the ego is being reformulated i've had some of the most negative experiences of my life one of which is discussed below the journey described above was also the first in which i shape-shifted and traveled underwater a theme which has now repeated several times with different variations six dm turner salvadoran with lsd on one occasion when I smoked Salvanoran during an LSD journey while coming out of the trance I found my awareness fixating on the sound of a loud vehicle that was driving by as I found this rather unpleasant I put on some music which soon took on, took on immense proportions in relation to all other perceptions the piece being played was Hendrix 1983 a song I've listened to numerous times while tripping on this occasion however I found myself even more captivated by the music than usual and very tuned into what was occurring each moment the most unique and surprising aspect of this experience happened when the music was leading me from the land to the sea as this occurred I experienced very distinct old factory hallucinations that were completely fitting with the musical scenario this is the only time i can remember having the sensation seven dmt 850 micrograms salvanoran with 400 milligrams 2cb the next psychedelic i tried salvanoran with was 2cb while on 2cb but prior to commencing this exper experiment, I asked the Salvia entity whether it was appropriate to use her at this time. Almost immediately after I'd begun meditating on this question, she appeared, she appeared in all her radiant splendor, 
took me for a ride through the Salvadoran realms and left me with a very definite yes as her answer. Earlier, I had consulted her while high on ecstasy and was advised that it was not an appropriate time to smoke Salvadoran. I smoked 850 micrograms of Salvadoran and was immediately transported into a dimension where I, where I shared the consciousness of the Salvia entity. My awareness was spread throughout the labyrinthian maze of her roots, stems and leaves in connection with, with many other plant forms. I find myself on the brink of infinity and sensation I have felt several times now on Salvanorn, but had previously only felt on ketamine at this level of intensity. I had the perception that when I smoke Salvanorn, the Salvia entity and myself actually trade, share consciousness for a period of time. While I'm being taken for a fantastic ride by the Salvanorn, the Salvia entity is simultaneously taking a ride while experiencing through a human reference. I had the feeling that Salvia enjoys being smoked with the smoker's mind when the smoker's mind is open to her on pleasant psychedelic journeys and to experience the unique philosophical perspectives which are often attained while tripping. Soon I found myself in a realm that I that was filled with fairy fairy and elf creatures I enjoyed playing with these critters which had a highly distinctive visual appearance these elves were quite different from those I frequently encountered while on DMT they were composed of numerous different elements were quite abstract and each was uniquely intricate the DMT elves tend to form intricate patterns if viewed as a group, being composed of a smaller amount of body part shapes, which are usually replicated in each elf. The Salvadoran elves were dressed differently than DMT elves and acted more goofy and playful. They were composed of many soft hues of color, while the DMT elves tend towards contrasting radiant elements. There was one critter that looked like a dressed hamster. I could see that his body was swoon, swoon from rough burlap cloth. He was bursting at the seams in a few spots, and I could see the loose thread and a bit of stuffing, stuffing starting to come out. This seemed not to bother him, however as he was quite happy and animated. The Salvadoran elves' energy was also different. They seemed just as playful and friendly as in a child's dream, without the enchanting, mischievous trickery of the DMT elves. As I was watching the elves, they began to mute, mutate, and I went through an experience which in the practice of Celtic magic is known as Dark Fairy. Initially, the elf turned into bat rodent-like creatures. I recalled looking at the unsightly details of their faces and ears and soon was seeing nothing but bat, bat mouths, teeth, and throats, as though I was being eaten by bats. This experience was not frightening in any way, as I was identifying as witnessing consciousness but it, it seemingly wasn't what i'd call a beautiful uh, be be beautific psychedelic experience either next i saw myself looking into the talons beak and throat of an owl and then i and then the talons beak and throat of a hawk it soon dawned on me that i was that i had just ascended from the center of the earth the flying animals that I saw were successively habituated first in caves below the ground, then moving higher into the sky. During this transition, I also went from night to day. Whatever I was, mo whatever I was, I was must have been quite 
tasty to all these flying creatures something i've now noticed on many salvadoran journeys is that the sensation from plant to human consciousness which in inevitably occurs as i return from each journey is seen as a descent from a higher to a lower level of consciousness and being upon returning from this salvadoran journey i felt a very strong connection with the salvia plant i desire i desire to have a similarly strong connection with nndmt and decided to smoke some of that some at that time i had one of the most cosmic dmt experiences of my life in this in this vividly recalled journey i passed through several clearly defined dimensional boundaries into what was for me previously unexplored territory eight dm dm turner 30 milligrams and ndmt subsequent smoking salvadoran i loaded my pipe and smoked 30 milligrams in three tokes i entered dmt space and was greeted with the usual pantheon of critters and objects recollection of my recent salvadoran journey and desire to connect with the same way with dmt was basically forgotten as i watched the elves moving about these elves and other creatures didn't seem to be uh, doing anything of particular interest or meaning and looking past them i saw some doors from behind which came occasion which came occasional flakes of bright colored light a friend of mine had recently remarked that he thought the dmt elves were primarily primarily there to distract one from entering the deeper aspects of the dmt experiences and that he'd been successful in moving beyond them by willing the elves to let him pass this was in my mind as i said to the elves let me through let me through i had to repeat this several times with lots of force even saying it out loud eventually the elves reluctantly let me through as an, and as i passed through a doorway i was admitted to a vast dimensional space at this point i seemed to be flying i was disembodied consciousness and i scanned this new space to hone in on any beings that might be present soon i came across some angel guardian type beings i recall there were about seven of them they looked like blobs of light somewhat gray in color and sort of egg shaped they appeared solid from a distance but on closer examination i saw that their bodies were made of closely packed fibers these were connected at the center but apparently could all open at any point on the outside of their bodies they seem to be part computer part robot part flesh brain matter but all of these elements were blended into one living whole when i came into this territory these beings briefly glanced over at me as if saying what's all this commotion then went back to their tasks seemingly ignoring me it seemed that they they were busy watching over everything that happened in our space-time dimension and occasionally masking minor making minor adjustments to keep everything in line anyway my thrust of will which had propelled me past the elves and through the door into the guardian space continued propelling me out through the back of the guardian's realm and into another time space dimension when i first entered this new time space dimension i encountered this guardian beings these beings look familiar too but slightly different than the guardians from our dimensions there were about 50 to 60 of them and they reacted very differently to my appearance 
these beings were quite surprised to see me primarily because i had not come from the dimension that they were guarding but had come in from the back side side of hyperspace they all huddled together as if in conference trying to determine if it was okay to let me pass eventually they decided with hesitation that i could continue on and swoop down into a foreign planetary system and i swooped down into a foreign planetary system i came to a planet that was highly evolved both significantly and techni technically si both scientifically and technically the place i entered into was some type of research center and my attention was focused on some large metallic pods that were being f moved in and out of racks by elaborate robotic arms each of these pods was something like an isolation chamber they were shaped like large coffins about eight feet long although with rounded edges the oval oval cross sections were about three feet wide the beings who used these pods looked exactly like humans the pods were filled with a foam type material which was connected to the sides of the pod and also connected to the entire skin surface area of the per person inside the pod the foam was separated and i understood that it served as a conductor of food water heat medicines etc between the pods technical system and the person resting in it these pods were also cold chambers they were not for cryogenically freezing a person but put them into some type of uh, suspended animation it was soon it was soon impressed on me that the whole pur purpose of these pods and this research center was that this was the the method the people here use to increase the level of dmt in the brains of the pod sleepers one fortunate enough to be in a research to be a research subject would go into a pod for weeks or months at a time the dmt levels in their brain would be significantly increased and they would spend their time having the most fascinating dreams this research that was taking place was considered the most serious aspect of the society's evolution i entered into the mind of a person inside a pod it was a woman who appeared to be about 25 years old as i went into her mind and became aware of all i've described above she simultaneously became aware of much of my world this was the first time her society had ever had contact with an earthling and it was quite a shock and discovery for her to find out that there were other people who didn't need to go through the elaborate technological process of increasing dmt levels through suspended animation but simply smoke the stuff and could collect it for any of several and could and could collect it from any of several plants it must have been a bit embarrassing for her initially i thought that she must have asked her guardians to let her pass into another dimension as i had done although on further thought it seemed that i had come to her dimension on my own power and was quite possibly invading her space she may have been a bit taken back by this as well almost instantly she wanted to leave her pod to announce her discovery to the rest of the research team okay gang let's end it there okay I don't think I can last sitting in this position reading like this for another there's another 15 pages to go 
did you enjoy it? Awesome. Really enjoying this. Awesome. Awesome. Um, I'm tripping up on some of the words and reading it fast. And because it's the trips are so fluid, right? They all of a sudden, a salvia trip or any type of uh, trip on any type of psychoactive substance can all of a sudden flip on you when i'm reading it it's all of a sudden flipping <laughs> it's the rhythm changes and it's cracking me up at times i hope you guys are enjoying this um so we just went through about from page 23 to 40 so we read about uh you know 17 pages and i'm getting a little antsy sitting in this position and holding this up um, and my voice is cracking a little bit just reading out loud so I think we'll have to do this on a third session finish it off on a third session my apologies for that gang do you consider yourself religious I'm spiritual um, raptor raptor meant uh, definitely I've come to 100% uh, understand that what you see here this hand this body this computer screen this book is not all there is to reality right we are not just material beings we are something else and it's up to you to decide what that something is okay glimnor awesome read first time tuning into one of your live streams awesome I'm glad you're enjoying it mo chicho you should read uh it asmr level I, I i know to read it that way i would have to tone it chill it down right uh, but i for me right now this book is about the information is about the trip journeys uh it is sort of hypnotic for me when i'm reading this i go sort of into a hypnotic hypnotic state They're reading anything really you immerse yourself into the book uh, into your reading, maybe comic books, graphic novels, books, audio books you listen to, or whatnot. Uh, so to me, it is hypnotic. Um, but for me, right now, it's about the information in this. I also like the uh, stuffled hamster who didn't mind that he had a hole pouring out of himself. I killed the troll first time in a oh, awesome elder god. Your your sword is sharp again. Nice. Sorry, troll. You had to go. You have to go. You should become a troll. You should become an elf. You should become an elf, right? Or go play with the elves. It's a much better universe. It's a much better reality than being a troll. Unless you're epic troll. Weak trolls are pretty pathetic, actually, right? Um, so we're on page 40, gang, okay? And we'll do this on a second reading or a third reading, I guess. All try to have this book up um the video book up the video up on uh tomorrow uh, i'll try thank you very much gang thank you very much for the follows and the subs um uh, i looked up every now and then and i saw one person saying what are we reading and i realized i didn't have this up so i quickly turned that on uh, yeah, I'm going to load this on YouTube. Part one is on YouTube. I'm going to learn part two on YouTube and part three on YouTube as well. Uh, Ding Bob Chicho, I noticed him mention a virgin aspect to Salvia Entity's energy. Look at the book cover. Yeah, indeed. Indeed. Do you see? Do you see? Do you see? Right. Beautiful. And gang, Salvia Divinorum. Uh, it's pure female energy he threatens someone about oh yeah elder god anyone anyone threatens anyone they're gone <laughs> as far as i see it <laughs> right good job brother thank you um, as far as salvia the venorum goes it's pure female energy okay pure female it's as it was mentioned here it's you can consider it to be mother nature if there's you know a lot of people say mother nature mother nature mother nature i never really understood the mother nature uh comments sort of description of nature right i can i can understand that it relates to 
birth and in life and all that but salvia divinorum really showed me what mother nature meant and it is pure female energy and i can honestly tell you that uh, it's the first time that i've ever really felt female energy on this level and it's the first thing that i've encountered that allowed me to understand femininity as someone's mentioning here uh, to a level where i could interact with it and understand it really what it was i really as 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 a as a, as a male uh it gave me insights into the feminine nature okay uh extremely important spice spice melange from dune <laughs> i didn't catch the female energy until later i really liked the last few trips it's uh it and salvia de Venorum gang is reverse tolerance right there's a lot of substances there and again this is just information i am not recommending any of this right this is just sharing information right a lot of substances the more you consume the more you need to consume to reach the same level that is one of the one of the pitfalls of substances pitfalls of addiction right because once you become addicted to something you need more of that thing to get the same sensations right salvia is reverse tolerant salvia divinorum you move you use if you consume you need less of it to reach the same state as before and there is no end to it by the way there is no limit to it i do not endorse the use of any illegal uh, substances uh, or any as elder god says uh, drugs uh, i do not really uh, i've seen i've seen substances take people out uh, a lot of people are not prepared for what they may be the doors they may be opening right uh, coolio have you ever done dmt or ayahuasca for comparison no uh, chicho blink twice for yes if you're uncomfortable speaking here no no but i've talked to a lot of people that have done dmt and ayahuasca i have introduced salvia divinorum to many people who have done dmt and ayahuasca and i have uh, and we'll talk about that stuff during my uh, salvia divinorum chronicles i'll tell you my experiences with salvia divinorum and where it took me and what i learned from it As for uh, female energy no, that's crazy uh, chicho crazy that you say that about uh, female energy the spirit guide I have and and probably only ever met through entheogens is very feminine and has helped me understand that as well yeah ding bobber I would have never understood the feminine uh, or the masculine on that level right because once you understand this you also understand this you cannot you, you will not know what love is if you always live or lack of love you, you know what i mean you, you don't know what uh, you have to have one and the other right it's the yin and the yang right uh, so by understanding by being exposed to the feminine i was able to understand not only the feminine but also the masculine okay earwit is your friend earwit is a website where you can do a tremendous amount of research i am i am to warrior to understand the female side very well yeah the female side is extremely powerful the feminine is power beyond what the masculine can imagine i can honestly tell you that very intricate very intricate okay that much i can tell you gang uh if a woman uses salvia does she experience the feminine or a masculinity feminine it is a feminine energy okay um and uh, by the way salvia de Manorum is uh, is called diviner sage which divines uh gives you premonitions of things that might be happening or might come to be 
right it is also the teaching plant okay it will it it will it has or it can introduce people to the realm of entheogens and shamanistic realms uh, beyond anything else that anyone has ever told me or anything that i have experienced but i do see the power yeah extreme extreme gang thank you for being here oh by the way check this out i went um i went picking um autumn olives so i got an autumn olive harvest check that out autumn olives gang it's autumn olive season okay if you've never tasted autumn autumn olives do yourself a favor they grow all over the place in north america right you pick them up like this right and just go it's got so much goodness like incredible goodness okay so much goodness ding bobber chicho i saw the same white light ev everywhere in the dream i had that inspired a song i became everything nice i already have the deja vu power naturally <laughs> and this isn't elder god this isn't just deja vu it shows you it eliminates time because it eliminates matter so all of a sudden you can not predict but see things that are going to happen in the future sometimes in the order that they occur sometimes in the reverse order it's something else it's not a deja vu it's literally things you see that are going to occur in the future it divines sexually not to have i tried salvia extensively coolio i'm off to make dinner great stream chicho appreciate all the interesting stuff my pleasure coolio thank you for being here perfect beauty 44 are they sweet or sour these things are tart like they got vitamin c up the yin yang <laughs> right <laughs> they're amazing like such powerful plants so you can just take this and go i actually have a video up on youtube where i eat a whole bunch of these so good absolutely amazing i think i see things before they happen often i call it deja vu for convenience ah okay okay oh god do they taste like grapes or olives mm, not olives uh if if you're going to call them um make it uh taste like i would say grapes but not really they have a very unique taste to them but i would call i would con uh compare it to more grape taste than like it's not olive it's grape it grows in um, oaxaca mexico okay uh in the mountain by the rivers so yummy Oop, last one okay gang if you're around tomorrow we got mathematics actually if you're around we got 11 streams scheduled for the next 14 days maybe so there's going to be 11 streams coming up the next three or four are mathematics tomorrow liqueur stream saturday cooking stream sunday and i believe we're doing politics on monday and then personal finance on tuesday i forget what the street what the schedule is but you can go to our patreon page and the information is there okay let me take this down 
mother nature was always a captivity con uh, captivating concept to me but this subject has made it all the more all the more lonely piggy awesome awesome what are we I haven't decided yet i think we're gonna make a persian dish actually with lentils rice and lamb uh in a sort of a casserole dish so we're gonna have to do it in parts put it together cook it up in the casserole i think that's what we're gonna do okay gang thank you for being here if you want to follow this work i am on patreon if you want to support this work i am on patreon i don't put anything behind paywalls everything's creative commons lentils is amazing elder god everything's creative commons share and share like if you want to follow the work you can just follow the work and after following the work if you like what you see and if you do have the means if you can support this project through patreon it's a fantastic way to make sure we continue doing what it is that we are doing we are live streaming on twitch twitch.tv forward slash chicho live c-h-y-c-h-o-l-i-v-e gang thank you for the follows thank you for the subs thank you for the conversations as coolio says welcome to the community if you're new here we do change up things a lot okay and thank you for the support as well as thank you for the support for those of you who've been supporting this work through patreon i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live or just before we go live for unscheduled live streams on lo minds vk parlor gab and twitter all the links are in the description of this video once it's been loaded on bitshoot and youtube and you can come to twitch and just put exclamation mark social and you get all the links perfect for you thank you have a good evening hopefully i can catch more streams welcome welcome perfect uh, beauty 44 and i'm glad you enjoyed uh, the content i will be uploading the audio of this stream of this reading to soundcloud okay not the full stream i'm recording this so i'll have to do it in three parts now but the reading of uh Salvinorn, this book should be on soundcloud let's assume soonish within the week as, as long as i can find more time to do another unannounced live stream so we can finish the reading and we will be uploading this video to youtube and bitshoot no we're on page 40 elder god we're on number nine i believe yeah we're on page 40 i gotta remember this actually i'll put a little bookmark there we're on page 40 number nine okay so we're going to continue the reading from page 40 or the ninth trip report okay and this video will be going up to bitshoot and youtube and if you want to support this work you can uh, follow there you can like you can share and if you're on youtube you can support this work by joining youtube membership and for those of you who join youtube membership thank you very much for the support thank you very much for the support yeah page 40 trip number nine elder god uh dance thank it thank you for making this amazing content my favorite intellectual streamer i really enjoy your lives on your youtube awesome thank you very much just sharing as much as we can right got to do got to do if the technocrats and centralized power is trying to reduce the amount of information that we can share it's our duty to share more <laughs> right gang thanks for being here mods thank you for taking care of business elder god thank you thank you gang i'll see you tomorrow for mathematics sweet bye everyone and free julian assange